Alpha Eagle here again. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well, and may God bless you all. Before we begin, I'd like to say I have nothing against anyone I'm about to talk about, and nobody should go after them. This is Mark Hughes. He's a left-wing activist who pretends to be a journalist and a movie reviewer. Just one look at this guy's Twitter will tell you all you need to know about this guy. He supports sending our money and resources to a pointless war in Ukraine that caused the deaths of thousands of people. He supported the writers and actors strike, in which millionaire actors and writers begged for money. And he is against free speech, and wants people to be punished if they don't use the imaginary pronouns of other people, as we can see by his use of his own pronouns in his bio. This guy was recently on the Fandom Initiative livestream to discuss two articles he wrote for Forbes about the failure of the movie the Marvels, and the general decline of Marvel Studios. Former member of the Fandom Initiative, Ed of Pop Counterculture, recently criticized Gary from Nerdorotic's review of The Marvels, claiming that his review had less to do with the movie and was more about the controversy surrounding the movie. This is what a Nerdorotic review is like. How much of Nerdorotic's reviews are actual reviews and how much is just, you know, uh, a dude in his fucking 50s complaining about, like, some of the dumbest fucking shit you've ever seen. Now let's hear a bit from Mark Hughes's review of The Marvels. Rumors, false accusations, and a heaping helping of racism and misogyny have been on display for months. So yes, much of the backlash and coverage and fan reactions surrounding The Marvels are rooted in racism and sexism, or are extensions of those institutionalized and foundational aspects in society and in entertainment and in journalism and in fandom. Quote, review had a significant portion focusing on blaming the movie's failure on false accusations of racism, sexism, and misogyny, despite the fact that mostly men saw this movie, essentially accusing the women who didn't see this movie as being racist, misogynist. I wonder if Ed would criticize Mark's review as being a dude in his 50s complaining about dumb things, since Mark's review didn't solely focus on the Marvel's movie. Probably not, since the Fandom Initiative are a bunch of hypocrites. Let's hear what the Fandom Initiative think about people who previously worked for political outlets, who now criticize mainstream pop culture. The, the other insidious level to some of these guys, too, the ones that we tend to look at a lot, are uh, is that there's a, the, the, the right-wing political angle. Like, several of these guys are, like, just, you know, no, known to be connected to right-wing media organizations and stuff like that. You know, uh, like Blaze TV and whatnot. The Fandom Initiative mentioned Blaze TV. They are talking about Eric July. They are suggesting that there is something insidious about Eric's criticism of mainstream pop culture simply because he contributed to Blaze TV. Yet, what are some of Mark's previous jobs? I didn't. I started in political uh, journalism, so I dealt with in DC, dealt with the, the neo Nazis and a lot of the right wing. Mm. Uh, Mark admitted to being quote a political journalist. And we've heard him put his political conspiracies in his The Marvels review, yet the Phantom Initiative don't seem to call him insidious for pushing his political propaganda. I wonder why. Again, because they are massive hypocrites who don't mind political views and pop culture criticism as long as the political views align with them. What else did Mark have to say about his political past? years ago writing and working in dc and uh <laughs> and breaking two by fours over <laughs> neo-nazis heads in the street in fights <laughs> it got really ugly <laughs> back in the day now i'm not accusing mark of committing a crime but he just claimed that he broke a two by four over someone's head now i'm no legal expert but that sounds like it might have been assault or possibly even something worse, allegedly. Now, I'll give him the benefit of a doubt and say that it might have been self-defense or he might have just been lying to pretend to be a tough guy. This guy doesn't look like he could lift a 2x4 alone, hit someone with it. But I'm saying that this admission of a violent act is not a good look for him, optically. Also, remember, whenever someone on the left calls someone else a, quote, neo-Nazi, they just mean anyone who disagrees with them politically. So this guy is a far-left political, quote, journalist, 
who puts his far-left political propaganda and conspiracy theories in his movie reviews and allegedly has a violent past, does he at least have some kind of experience or connection to Marvel that will give him some kind of credibility to his analysis of what's going on at Marvel Studios? A source behind the scenes at Marvel. Right, right. right. So. He just admitted that he doesn't have a source at Marvel, so basically everything he says about Marvel from this point forward, he just pulled straight out of his ass. Now, to be fair, he's entitled to his opinion like anyone else, but he's clearly not an expert, and his opinion is just that, an opinion. There are no facts to what he says, but let's hear what he has to say anyway. So, okay, Mark, give us your reasons why the Marvels failed. There was some real directed hate toward this movie. You can look at the, the demographics and, and the polling and who was who liked the movie, who gave it the worst reviews, all that. And it's pretty clear what's happening. You know, right. it, it was targeted. <laughs> he, he blames a targeted hate campaign? Uh, yeah, I would need some evidence for that. <laughs> Where's his receipts? Who organized this, quote, hate campaign? <laughs> How would one even do that? People simply disliking the trailer is somehow a targeted hate campaign. <laughs> Amazing. Well, in this guy's mind, it couldn't have been that the trailer sucked. I mean, it's supposedly a superhero movie, and it has a musical number and space cats in it, for crying out loud. That's something you'd see in a parody of a superhero movie, but no, the trailers didn't suck. It was all you hateful bigots in your hate campaign. And say, hypothetically, there was a targeted hate campaign, then where is the targeted love campaign from the Marvel fans? If the haters came out in massive numbers to downvote the trailer, where were all you fans to upvote it? Where were all you fans to actually see the movie and prove us haters wrong? What's Mark's next excuse? Can we talk about the fact that the movies this year, just in general, are underperforming? Yes, it, it's a big issue, and... Look, COVID is part of that because mm -hmm. it, to some extent there are people who are are staying away because of COVID. I'm more selective, and I love theater experience. <laughs> it's COVID's fault, guys. <laughs> when are these people going to stop it with this COVID excuse? Five or ten years from now, these people will still be blaming COVID for movies bombing. Star, <laughs> The Way of Water made two billion. Spider Man, No Way Home made a billion. Top Gun Maverick made a billion. The Super Mario Brothers movie made a billion. Barbie made a billion. Jurassic World Dominion made a billion. And they all came out during COVID. So stop it with this it's COVID's fault crap. What other excuses did Mark have? You didn't have the stars out there promoting the <clears throat> stuff. And if the actors aren't out here and, and generating it on social media and making people feel more connected to it, I think this is the first time people have felt disconnected from the MCU. Sure. And I, it, it's part of that is, you know, the, the lack of the, the stars being able to promote it. Now he blames the actors' strike. Now whose fault is that, Mark? It's the fault of the actors themselves. If they didn't go on strike, they could have promoted the movie. So the actors themselves shot themselves in the foot. And as I said earlier, Mark himself supported the strike. So in a way, Mark is blaming himself. I would agree with that. He goes on to blame the usual suspects, AI, streaming services, and of course, the constant villain, the straight white male. We are to blame for everything, didn't you know? But the one thing these guys never blame is the filmmakers themselves. When are the filmmakers going to take responsibility for their actions? Never, of course, because they are never to blame in these guys' eyes. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I'm Alpha Eagle. God bless you for watching, God bless America, and I pray that Mark and other people on the left start taking responsibility for themselves and stop blaming fans and straight white men for all the problems in the world.